Hi, this is going to be a really fun episode. In this one, we're going to take our Rails application, which we've seen is pretty ugly, and we're going to start to make it look a lot better. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to integrate a design framework called Twitter Bootstrap. And Twitter Bootstrap does a lot of things. It helps us uh, have better cross-browser compatibility. It integrates style sheets, JavaScript. It gives a nice base that we can build on for our design and gives us some really nice shortcuts. Uh, and we'll be using those throughout the course. And uh, it also helps for building applications that are responsive. So they can work great on iPads, uh, phones, um, uh, computers, everything like that, and I'll do it very quickly. Uh, I've seen, as I've developed, that uh, certain design techniques that used to take me hours or even days to build out uh, in with using Twitter Bootstrap, sometimes it's a matter of minutes to integrating those kind of features. And so um, I'm excited to do this part of the course because I think you're going to get a lot out of this and you're going to be able to have a nice foundation for building some great looking websites. So to get started, the very first thing we're going to do is create a branch that we're going to build this out on. And so we're going to do git checkout dash b and we're going to say adding dash bootstrap. And you can call it anything you want. Just make sure you don't have any spaces or anything like that. Hit return and so we've switched to a new uh, a new branch and the very first thing we're going to do is come to gem file and here on the bottom and you can put this anywhere you want but I'm going to get rid of all of this all this commented out stuff and just type in gem and then an apostrophe bootstrap dash sass and another ending apostrophe comma and another apostrophe and a little squiggly line and an arrow or it looks like a little squiggly arrow and then the number is 2.3.1.0 an ending apostrophe and that's it so hit save and close your gem file come down to the command line and type in bundle install and there we go so that was really nice and quick so we have bootstrap now installed and so the next thing to do is we need to rename our uh, our CSS file our main one for the application and uh, there's a couple ways you can do it you could come to assets style sheets and this is a file we're wanting to edit um, but before we edit it we need to rename it and you could click here just hit rename and that's really nice if you're using uh, Nitrous. However, if you're going to be doing uh, development and using, you know, say, Vim, which is what I use when I'm developing locally or you know, uh, something on that side of the world like Emacs, then uh, it's really good to know how to rename things using the terminal. So I will show you how to do that. And I'll type clear to get us back up to the top. And so to rename it, just type in the letters M, V, and that's like movie and Victor space and type app assets style sheets application dot CSS it'll, if you're using the tab autocomplete it'll add a space at the end and then just type in app assets style sheets application which looks identical except now hit delete and do dot s c s s hit return now if you come up here and hit refresh you'll see that renamed it for us, which is very nice. So uh, so open that file up and you're gonna delete all of this right here and you're just going all these, all, everything that's commented out. And it, one thing I'll hit re, uh, undo. Uh, if, you're, if this is gonna be a very large application with a ton of style sheets and things like that, then uh, you may want to keep some of this and just add the bootstrap call. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity and because the majority of the CSS things we're gonna be putting in, I'm just gonna put into this file uh, that I'm just deleting all of it. Do the at sign import space and start quotes and just type in bootstrap 
and that's just going to import bootstrap and then do a semicolon. Hit save, close out of that, and now let's open up our views and layouts, application, ERB, and in this one we're going to come in and just add some more content, so, uh, or I should say some more calls. So we're going to give a div, which is just a separator, and it's after the body but before these links. And I'm going to do div class equals, and I'm going to say container, end out that div, and go on the next line and do uh, starting brackets ul class equals, and put inside the quotes nav space nav dash tabs end quotes and end the bracket and then come down here highlight all this and we want everything indented and an easy way that you can do this with nitrous and a lot of other text editors is highlight everything you want then just hit tab a few times and you can see it lines it up very nicely for you so come down give a new line go back a couple spaces and start the brackets slash ul so that's just closing up this unordered list right here. And then come down below the yield, but above body, and type in slash div. And it took it to the wrong spot, so bring it back. I like to have all these all lined up, and uh, it's actually very important when you're wanting to analyze your code. So uh, this div closes out the container. And what all the container is in Bootstrap is it's just going to keep everything on the page and it's going to give some nice margins on the side and make it look better. So uh, that's all we're going to do here. And so let me close out of this and I believe this should work. Uh, unless I'm forgetting something, but let me check. Uh, make sure start up the Rails server. And I'll close out of this and hit preview and port 3000. Let it load up. And if you're seeing this right now, it means that there may be uh, some old, uh, uh, some old stuff, I should say, some uh, old style sheets in your cache or you know something like that. So uh, just come back, hit Command Shift R. And there you go. And so it, if you want to know what that means is uh, your browser by default tries to remember some of your old styles and things like that. And so it loads it up in something called its cache. And in order to see any design changes, uh, you have to clear out that cache. And there's a few ways of doing it. The shortcut that I like to do is just Command, Shift, and R if you type that in on your keyboard. The other thing you can do is just hold down on the Shift key, come to Refresh, click that on the browser, and it does the same thing. It's like a hard refresh. And so now you can see we have a much a start of a much better looking uh, site. And so if you click any of these, you can see that those changes are populated uh, throughout the application. And I'm going to make one other change here on the nav bar. So we're going to come back to the application file. And if you notice, this is an unordered list. And what that means is it needs to have list, list items underneath it. And so a list item, it just starts off with a bracket, and then you type in li and end the bracket, and copy it out for each of these. And then we're going to do ending brackets at, on the end of it. So make sure you do dash, or I'm sorry, slash li, and then go do it for the rest of these. Hit save, and now let's see the difference. That is not exactly what I was looking for. Oh, well, that was a uh, dumb mistake. <laughs> I misspelled class. That would fix it. Okay, now come back and you'll see a lot better looking site. So Command Shift R, and look at that. We have a great looking nav bar, and you'll notice it also has some nice hover effects. So when you hover hover over the nav bar, you can see these little tabs. So it's very clear which one you're trying to pick. So you can pick about us, 
contact features, anything like that. And it gives a really nice look and feel. So we're already well on our way to having a better looking site. So let's come back here. And one other change that uh, you should do, um, you're not going to notice it immediately, but uh, it's just good to put in place is come to Assets, JavaScripts, Application JS, and right below jQuery underscore UJS, give a new line item and just say require bootstrap. Hit save, come back to your application, hit refresh. You're not going to notice anything different right now, but we are going to add quite a few JavaScript elements uh, that come built in with Bootstrap, so we're going to be using those later on. Um, so let's come back down to the console, and like good developers, we're going to take care of all of our source, source version control. So hit get status. You can see all the items that changed. So we want to do get add, space, and a dot. Add all those items, get commit, dash M, and type in added Twitter bootstrap for styling. End it with an apostrophe, hit return. And now remember, because we're developing on a master branch or on the uh, a feature branch, we're gonna need to go and merge this with the master. And the way to do that is get checkout master and then do get merge and then just type in the name of the branch and we know that that is adding dash bootstrap and hit return and then all we have to do is get push and because it's been a little while let's see how this looks on Heroku just uh, because it's really good, even if you're seeing everything locally, it's good to push up to Heroku because you never know when you're going to have made some some change that maybe didn't populate to Heroku the way you'd want, and it's a lot better to catch those issues right now. So just hit up, and instead of git push, uh, just do git push Heroku master. And it'll push that up. And remember, when you push up to Roku, it does take a little while longer. Uh, so just kind of bear with it as it fetches everything. And now that we added Bootstrap, we actually added a lot of files um, and a lot of different assets that we didn't have before. And every time we add those, it's going to have it's going to take longer for Heroku because there's more files and there's more different connections that it has to make. So every time you add more to the app, it's going to take longer to push it up. So just be patient with it and uh, let everything load up and then we'll test it as soon as it's up there. And there you go, it worked. So let's go to enterprise app, enterprise ape.heroku, and we'll just go to the root. And you can see right here it didn't work, and there's actually a good reason for that. And what the reason for that is, uh, we have to actually tell Heroku that we want to compile the assets because these are considered, or CSS files are considered assets, and Heroku needs to know what we want to do with them. So uh, we just come back here and we can minimize all of this and then just go into config, environments, production, and scroll down. You can see right here where it says it's on line 30 for me. Here should be around there. Config.assets.compile is set to false. We want to set that to true. Hit save and you can close out of these files and now just push every or well we're gonna have to go through the whole process again so get add get commit and just say a fixed heroku compiling bug and then push it up
and then push it up to Heroku. And if you notice when I just typed that in, I did git push Heroku instead of git push Heroku master. And by default, Heroku takes whatever the master branch is. And so uh, you can really, as long as you're only pushing the master branch, you can always just type in uh, git push Heroku. Uh, it allow, Heroku allows for some more options such as, you know, pushing up other branches um, and different things like that. Uh, but for our case, we're just going to be using master. So that all worked. So now let's come back to Heroku and do command shift R or remember just shift and refresh right here. And there you go. So the, those assets uh, compiling is what we needed in order to make this work. So you can see this all looks great. And in our next video, we're actually going to take this uh, table and we're gonna style it and start making this look a lot better. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next episode.